Hi everyone, this is Jessica from CorpU, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Smarter Growth webinar, an HR guidance system for organizational effectiveness with our partner, Dave Ulrich. Before we begin, uh, just a few housekeeping items. Everyone is in listen-only mode. Should you have any issues or questions during the presentation, please type a question into the question box and I can assist you. Um, it, we will be recording and sharing this to our website afterwards, so I know that's always a question, so I want to make sure that I got that um, out right as we began. And before we, um, but without any further ado, I'd like to pass it over to our founder and CEO, Alan Todd. Alan? All right. Thank you, Jessica. Welcome, everybody. I am super excited about today's uh, episode, today's uh, session. Um, there's one thing we've learned in working in with organizational learning systems and, and growing leaders, our mission has been to grow leaders who make a difference. And over over the years, we, we've talked to leaders when they get through programs and we ask them about the challenges that they're facing and they're, they're forever trying to shape culture and drive culture change and behavior change in individuals and to get everyone to learn together so that they can they can win and, and create an impact. And as as we've as we've teased out those lessons we know that companies and leaders they need to they, they need technology to provide finer grained measures and lead to more precise insights. And the reason I'm excited is because I don't think there's a person that I have come across other than Dave Ulrich who has a vision for what tomorrow's leading organizations do. I don't think you'll find a more original or or more well informed point of view than Dave. So we know he's one of the most prolific writers in the world of business and HR and organizational effectiveness. And frankly, uh, thought of by just about everyone as one of the most thoughtful and insightful thinkers there are. And so Dave has, a, has an incredibly compelling vision about what the future looks like, what tomorrow looks like, and how HR leaders will be driving those organizations into the future and what organizational effectiveness looks like. So I am uh, super excited to turn it over to uh, Dave Ulrich to walk us through creating a competitive organization um, and an organizational guidance system. So Dave, if you're there, could you say hello to everybody? Uh, I don't want to say hello. You were so gracious to me that I don't want to uh, ever have you stop. That was a very kind <laughs> introduction. And uh, I, I, to the audience that's listening live or on, on video, uh, one of my passions is to look at what's next and to try to say, what what is it that we can do to create more value? And so in that process, we, we try to continually experiment. It has been a privilege the last uh, few months to be experimenting with Alan and his incredible team, uh, especially his big sister who uh, told me that I should remind Alan to do what she says. No, that was a Oh joke my gosh. That. <laughs> that was just that was just for Sue. Uh, but I have a big sister as well, whom I adore in every way. But uh, we are trying to do some stuff that's not been done. And so we're laying out some ideas. We hope you'll partner with us and begin to shape what I'm going to call. And I assume you can see my screen just to be sure, Alan. Is that can you see my screen? Yep, you are. You are got uh, in got control. It, got, it, got it. We're trying to create competitive organizations in a way that's sustainable. And so I'm gonna share with you a bunch of stuff pretty quickly. You'll have access to the slides, get a hold of CorpU. And at RBL, with my partner, Norm Smallwood, we're trying to work with Alan and again, his incredible team. Uh, you'll hear from Ryan at the end of the session about how do we help build organizations? And so our passion is to create value, very simple. What does HR do that creates value? And you can see in the marketplace today, there seem to be two issues that are getting a lot of attention. One is digital. Digital is in everything. The other is analytics and information. In the digital space, what we see happening um, is we're seeing in the digital space a move from efficiency, where we focus on our platforms like Oracle SAP, to stage two, which is innovation and effectiveness. Uh, we see an enormous amount of attention right now in the HR digital space with efficiency and innovation. I just had the privilege of attending a session with Josh Burson. He said there's 2,700 HR digital apps. I would venture to say the 90% or 95% are in phase one and phase two. There's a new app for everything. But the next phase of digital is information, which we're gonna talk about, and connection. 
in the analytics space on this slide, we see that analytics has moved. We're not just looking for a scorecard that tracks what I've done today. Insight or predictive analytics, it predicts what might happen based on today's data, but we want to do intervention and impact. And so at the intersection of these two spaces, we've got digital HR changing the way we do our work, again, mostly in stage one and two, and analytics. And so when we put those together in our world, we see this kind of need for what we need to do next. So you see these phases of digital, efficiency, innovation. You see the phases of analytics, scorecard and insights. That's today's world. In order for us to create even more value, we want to move in the phases of digital, not just with an isolated app, but real information and real connection or experience. We don't just want an insight, we want to do an intervention. And we want that intervention to have impact on the business. We call, oh, my screen is showing. You see, I need to get rid on my screen of this piece here. Sorry. I, we, don't, we don't see it. Oh, you don't see the go, to, the go to nope. webinar? You don't, oh, good. No, nope, we, don't, we don't see that. Okay. So let me just give an example that I think we've all heard of. And it's, it's one of the old examples in HR or in, in digital. Uh, the father gets a call from a retail company and, and the retail clerk says, congratulations, your daughter is pregnant and is going to have a boy. Well, the father didn't know. And, and that's the insight. That's the predictive insight. And that's where the story talks. And we're all excited because the, the daughter was buying baby clothes in blue colors. And it's done. We need to go the next step in organizations. It's not enough to have an insight. You want an intervention. So what's the father going to do? How's he going to respond to his daughter? What are the impacts of that? And how will you move from just insights, which is predictive analytics, to intervention with impact? We're going to call that a guidance system. And so what we're trying to create is the next step in managing both digital information and stages of analytics. Now, as I said to start, we're not 100% sure we got it right. We would love for some of you to co-create with us what we're doing, but we see three steps as kind of assumptions, and I'll talk about them pretty quickly, then some pathways to building this organization guidance system, and actually a methodology that we've been experimenting with and working with, and then hopefully an offer for you with implications of how we can go forward. So we're trying to share with you an aspiration that, uh, to be honest, uh, somebody was saying to me this week, they said, Dave, what do you work on now at this stage of your career? And my answer was moonshots. I don't, I love doing workshops. And if, if I have a privilege with Alan and or his team, we'd love to do workshops with you. But I want to create moonshots that shape the way we think and behave in organizations. This is a moonshot. It has a powerful opportunity to fundamentally rethink how HR can deliver value in an organization. And so I'm going to take you through these six bullets. The the fourth one, Pathways Organization and Defining Guidance are going to get the bullet. But let's start with HR is not about HR. These set the assumptions. This is one of my favorite questions over the last uh, year. I've been asking, what's the most important thing HR can give an employee in your company? I ask that with business leaders. I ask that with HR leaders. And here's the answers I often get. Uh, purpose, value, opportunity, teamwork. Uh, meaning, growth, and I go, wow, that's so cool. These are all great things. If you were playing a game in America called uh, Family Feud, you get points for answers. All of that stuff together adds up to 40 points. Here's the assumption we come in with. The most important thing HR can give an employee in the company is an organization that wins in the marketplace. Now you go, well, that's obvious. No, it's not obvious. We don't think about that. If we're going to create what we call a guidance system, guidance starts with a focus of where we're headed. And where we're headed is winning in the marketplace. All those ideas of purpose, vision, values, relationships don't count if you don't win. And so if we're about creating a guidance system, how do we guide HR to win? The second, Let me just stop with that, Alan, see if any questions came through. I said I'd stop after each of these uh, yellow circles. 
Yep. Uh, we have uh, the question coming in about the slide deck, and I think uh, I'll just repeat or uh, just let everybody know that we will make the slide deck available to you, so that, that will come. Um, um, and if you have questions, please feed them into the question box. Uh, questions for Dave, and then we'll uh, we'll get we'll get to the questions as we're going through today. So thanks for that, Dave. Back to you. Super. I should also tell you, uh, Alan, Norm, Smallwood, and I have just drafted a. It's so hard to do this in 1,100 words, and I think between Alan and Norm and I, we we went to 1150 or something. We'll have an article on this that we'll post a week from today or a week from yesterday on June 2nd uh, on LinkedIn. And if you want a copy of that, we'd be happy to send it. Uh, we are really moving fast in this space. Now remember again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to help HR create value. On the left-hand side in the blue box, we got digital HR that should move to information and connection. We got analytics on the right-hand side that should move to impact and intervention. So it's not enough just to have one of the 2,700 apps. We wanna build a guidance system that connects people and gives them information with impact. And to do it, you got to start with the first yellow uh, circle. It's not about HR. It's about business. Why does that matter? Because the world is changing. This is one of my other favorite discussion points. And if we had time, we'd do it. Uh, I can do the right thing or the wrong thing. That's pretty straightforward. I can do it well or I can do it poorly. I was going to make another big sister joke, but I think Sue would uh, call my sister and tell me to be quiet and not ever do that again. So I... Uh, <laughs> I will pass on my big sister joke. Um, but I've given you a chance to think about it as you're listening or watching. Sell one is the best sell. I want to do the right thing well. What's the worst sell to be in? Two, three, or four. Many people jump to four. We believe it's sell two. The wrong thing happens because the world is changing. And so in HR, we've done HR a particular way, and we know how to do it well but the world is changing. It becomes the wrong thing. Here's the changes in the world. We could spend an entire day on this, social, technical, economic, political. The big changes are in that technical area where we've got to use digital and technology to build connection and information. HR's got to uninvest in our past and reinvest in our future. With that as a backdrop, I think the HR world begins with competition and how do we win in the marketplace? Let me get through this one, Alan, and we'll see if there are questions. So when we have a meeting with business leaders, we often start by saying, what do you have to do to win? What do you have to play? What do you have to win with? We have found in the blue circles, there's four traditional sources of competitiveness. Financial, I have to have a profit, lower my cost, increase my revenue, manage risk, increase investor value. Strategic, I've got to have a business mix, customers, where are we going to play, how are we going to win, and technology and operations. I've obviously got to have a digital agenda and operating process. And then the fourth box is organization, talent, leadership, capability. One of my favorite questions, and I don't have it on this sheet, and I encourage any of us to do it if we're in HR or business leadership, is to say, think of these four domains of winning and being competitive financial, technological, strategic, and organization, divide 100 points. Which of those will create the most value for customers that a competitor cannot copy? I've done that exercise probably 100 times in different forms, probably 1,000 times. Inevitably, here's what I get, 35 to 40 points or 30 to 40 points in organization. Financial, our competitors can match our price. They match our processes for managing costs. Strategy, by the time you build a product, somebody's already undone it and replicated it. Came up yesterday in a great, or day before yesterday. Technology, we can source it. What do you got to do to build the right organization? And so we believe that that yellow organization piece is one of the key pieces to competitiveness. And it's the piece we've got to be good. And so we try to unbundle that and we see four things. Organization in part is talent. Do we have the right workforce, the right people? In part, it's capability. Do we have the right workplace, the right processes, the right culture? And the intersection is leadership. Those for us seem to be the three pathways to building organization. And then for those of us who come from the HR world, do we have an HR department that sustains it? So what we believe 
is that there are four pathways to creating a better organization, talent, leadership, capability, and HR. Now, let me just stop for a minute, Alan, and see if anybody else has come through. I'm uh, not watching the questions as much as I am trying to think about what I'm going to say. Yep, no worries. So a so, uh, question from Carrie is, how would you define an organizational guidance system? You know, I'll hold off on that because I'm going to get into it. Uh, but Carrie, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide. A guidance system is, uh, is a little bit like a navigation system for a missile. It's the navigation system for an automated vehicle. It's what a guidance counselor would give a student. Um, it's a direction with a set of tools to help you accomplish that direction. I'm going to get into that with the uh, fifth bucket. Great question. Okay, great. By the way, that's a hint to move quickly. First three buckets are pretty easy. The world's changing. HR is not about HR. You got to create a rationale that organization matters. And there's four pathways to organization. I'm going to do these slides so quickly, it's going to burn your mind out. But along these four pathways to organization, talent, leadership, capability, and HR, there have literally been thousands or hundreds of thousands of work. At RBL, the firm where Norm Smallwood and I and other great colleagues work, and at Corp U, where Alan and his great colleagues work, we think we have a unique point of view. And what I want to communicate in these next slides very quickly is that you would feel comfortable that we think we bring a body of knowledge and insight on each of these. So I'm gonna go quickly through, what's our point of view about talent, leadership, and, and capability? We've written some books on talent, done a lot of research on talent. We believe in managing, and you can see some of the books and stuff, in managing talent, there's three major buckets. Competence, it has A, B, and C. Have we brought the right people in? I'm working with a company right now and they're saying, the key to our talent is we change our strategy is getting the right people in the company. B, do we move them through well? Do we do learning innovations? And obviously Alan and his group and others have done that. Do we have performance, career mobility? C, do we appropriately retain and remove people? So the brown boxes at the top are competence. Do we have the right people? It's not enough. You gotta to go to the blue box, commitment. Do those people we have feel engaged to give their best efforts? that employee experience and connection. And E, are we energizing our employees through shaping their work environment? We believe that in those A, B, C, D, and E pieces, we can capture 90% of what's going on in the talent space that will help us win in the marketplace. And again, that's a very quick one-page point of view. Leadership. Over the past 20 years, Norm Smallwood and my colleagues and I have written eight or nine books on leadership. We have a strong point of view on leadership. At the bottom left, we have focused on Asia, but our definition is real simple. The results or effect of leadership is a set of attributes, some skills leaders should have, we call the code, that delivers stakeholder results. Customers, we've written leadership brand, employees, we wrote about why of work. We wrote about the organization, victory through organization, and investors, that gets sustained and implemented. In other words, let me just share with you, we have a point of view about leadership and what it means to be an effective leader. That's pulled out into the steps of creating a leadership brand. And we've identified six steps that you can do in your company to establish and create a leadership brand. Again, I'm trying to get through this just to let you know, we're not coming at this guidance system. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'll tell an anecdote that, that why I'm doing this stuff. A friend of mine teaches in technology at the university. And he says, once a semester, or once a year, a young, very thoughtful, very bright young man or young woman comes in and says, I've got a new app that's gonna change the world. What should I do? And hoping to become the next uh, great uh, designer. And my friend who's a very thoughtful professor of IT says, you know, you should take a class in how to code. And the person looks at him and their face drops and says, I don't want to learn how to code. I want to change the world with my app. You know, you got to know the basics. You got to know the basics. It's one of my top pet peeves in our HR world. I see people coming out with, oh, there's something new about leadership. You got to have a business rationale for leadership. And I think, give me a break. We've been talking about that for decades. Don't recreate. And so I want to let you know if you're 
going to trust us as we design the guidance system that Carrie asked about. We have a point of view with in leadership, with books on this topic. We think we know this pathway pretty well. Next pathway is capability. Uh, this is my passion. This has been my pathway. My first book was called, uh, well, we got books. The first book was Organizational Capability, uh, published in 1990. The latest book on the top right is out in August, Reinventing the Organization. We think we have created a definition of organization that we know what it takes to win along that pathway. And we've got a lot of writing on that pathway. I won't bore you with it. There's an evolution in organization from hierarchy and the pyramid on the left to systems, the 7S model, the STAR model, now McKinsey calls it the uh, uh, McKinsey Health Index, to a capability model to what we're writing about in the book on the top right. It's called Reinventing the Organization, where we talk about an ecosystem. There's a lot of capabilities a company might have, and we've listed them based on the research we've done on this slide. Again, we have a beta database point of view. What sustains that? HR. If I'm going to be good in HR, what I've got to do is build an HR department that delivers talent, leadership, and organizational capability. If I can make those things happen because of the way HR is working, I win. And those factors become a pathway to competitiveness. So again, just to let you know that we're not coming at this cold, we've written whatever number of books there are here, too many, on what does it mean to build HR value added, starting from the left and moving to the right. Um, the book I know nobody's seen is the bottom right, Strategic Human Resource Management, uh, co-authored with John Story and Pat Wright. Um, when we finished drafting the book, it was about 90 single space pages and then 15 pages of bibliography. Um, so I uh, pulled it together and found out there were 320 some references. Again, the message is we know what it takes to build an HR agenda that delivers value. And the simple message is that agenda needs to focus not on administrative utility or even functional excellence or even HR strategy, but on HR winning in the marketplace. And that was one of the books we did, HR Outside In. And we've identified nine factors that allow that to happen. Now, I'm not going to bore you with that. Okay. Whoa. I'm going to stop and take a deep breath. Let me describe where I've gone and where now we want to go to get to Carrie's question, which is the focus of this session. I started with the two pieces in blue. What does HR have to do to create value? We've got to use digital HR better. There's no question. Everybody's gaga over this. Every HR conference is trying to move HR, and we want to move from efficiency and innovation, the dominant set of HR right now, to information and connection. I've got to manage analytics better. It's not just a scorecard. It's not just an insight of predictive analytics. It's an intervention that has impact. That means creating a guidance system. And I should have given a definition, Carrie. Thank you for the comment. A guidance system tells me how, how I'll use HR, the first circle, to build business value, how I'll respond, second circle, to changing conditions, how I will identify fourth pathways to building a competitive organization, talent, leadership, capability, and HR. Each of those four pathways has a rich and a deep history that collectively I was thinking, Alan, you, Norm Smallwood, and I, who are kind of the uh, principals on this agenda, I hate to say this, we have over 100 years of experience in trying to manage those four pathways. So I'm going to stop yikes. if they're yikes. I know. I, uh, <laughs> um, and and by the way, I hope there are some folks I know who have 50 years of experience, but it's really one experience. Uh, you can tell time by their talks. Uh, you're learning as I speak that I that I'm making some of this up as we learn with you. But we are so committed to developing how do you manage those four pathways to help a company win in the marketplace. So let me just stop. Um, any questions? Yep, so we have questions, and folks, please uh, please type your questions into the question box. We'll take more, and Dave, the only thing I want to say is I think there are people with 50 years experience, and they say it's one year experience repeated 50 times, and there's a lot of uh, research on, on uh, performance and uh, expertise and expert performance about what experts do differently, and all I can say is that you model those behaviors um, 
and, and every single year you're always on the cutting edge and doing new research. So we have a question from Lisa. Are there great ways for HR departments to learn how to align with the new thinking? What training development supports this? Absolutely. Um, if I were giving you three buckets of aligning with the new thinking, the first is change our assumptions, which are the first three pieces. That HR is not about HR, it's about winning in the marketplace. That winning in the marketplace is the customers of HR are not about the employees, they're about the customers, the investors. So bucket one is get our unconscious bias in HR gone. I could do too much on this. Um, you say, well, that's done. I was just at a session with a whole bunch of newly minted heads of HR from some of the best companies in the world. When they came to the session, they were asked a question. What's your greatest business challenge? By the way, if I had time, I'd put it up for you. Not, and here is what they said. My greatest business challenge is managing the next generation of leaders, uh, managing our HR governance system, getting HR focused on business priorities. Not one of the 25 items started with our greatest business challenge is serving a new set of customers. Our greatest business challenge is improving our net promoter score, beating our competitors to market opportunities with innovation, manage our, our stock price that hasn't moved in five years. Our assumptions, Lisa, in HR are still HR for HR. The second circle I'd have, Lisa, is get us focused on those four, three pathways. What does HR deliver in talent, leadership, and organization? And the third assumption is upgrade my HR work. That's get the HR department right. We'll talk about that. We've, we've talked about it in the books and get your HR people right. Am I still on? Yep, you're there. That's good. Let me. And Lisa says Alan. thank you. Oh, Lisa, you're kind. Thank you. By the way, I was going to say the best thing you could do is call RBL or Corpu and let us come advise you. But you're going to see we're changing that. So, Alan, you and I have been after this for a while. You and I talked about, frankly, I did a, a course for Corpu and I was honored to do it. It was a course on talent. I think it's a decent course. And Alan and I started talking recently and, and we said, you know, we can put out a course. I can put out at RBL an assessment. I can do all these interventions, but there's got to be a different way to deliver sustainable value. And that's where we begin to come up with this idea of a guidance system. Alan, do you want to talk about when we talked about this, what triggered in you? And then I'm going to go into this. So what does a guidance system really look like? And, and, and Carrie, I'll come back to your question. But Alan, as you and I talked, we really hit these first set of issues. Any, any observations from our discussion or feelings? Yeah. So, so, it, it was really you, you and I talking and sparks were flying because we, we'd been focused on, and I'd spent, spent so long, 30 years focused on organizational learning, organizational capability building. And even when we get into analytics, we only got into a lot of learning outcomes. And, and the most elusive thing is building the connections that go beyond high impact learning. So where you get learning outcomes around engagement and knowledge and understanding behavior change, but how do you drive that to, to create business value? And I think what struck me was every time we talk, Dave, you're always talking about from the outside in, you're always talking about, well, everything we're doing, have we looked at it from the impact of customers and of shareholders? And I, and I just know that in, in, in learning and development and HR circles, we, we, you bring that fresh voice every day to that conversation. And I know we get stuck. Um, I get stuck with lots of chief learning and chief HR officers. And we, and we, we, we forget about those things because we're so focused on learning outcomes and learning impact um, that we don't connect all those dots. And so I think that's what really was exciting was your, your thinking about, listen, we have to connect this in, a, in an outside in way. We have to find a way that creates demonstrable evidence-based business value. So if we can create HR interventions and activities that create that kind of value, that's what the organization of the future will look like. That's what the HR uh, team of the future will do. And I think, so that's, that's what uh, I'm excited about, figuring that out with you and working with some organizations that want to pioneer this new approach. And, and I think we're pioneering it. I think we're co-creating it. Um, now, what is it? A guidance system, carry to your question. Um, and I keep looking for words that, okay, we don't want a dashboard that tells me where we've been, 
well, we don't want a scorecard or a dashboard where we've been. We don't even want to know the predictive analytics. If we put A and B together, we'll get C. That's the story of the of the retail store with the father whose daughter might be pregnant. We want to know where are we going to win. And as, as I played with that in a sustainable way, I begin to think about the concept of guidance. And it's, I think, a fascinating word because guidance is not just a dashboard. It moves you. So I got into it. And the early uses of guidance come from the military, good or bad. In World War I, both the um, Allies and the, and the Central Europe, the, 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 the Axis, had bombs that had about equal bombing power. And so you can imagine in your mind some of the old movies of dropping bombs and almost randomly hitting. By World War II, the, the Allies had created guidance systems that when they dropped a bomb, they could narrow its focus. They predict that that was one of the leading indicators of success during that, that horrible combat and we're not here to justify war. But over the generations now, every missile, every uh, either astronauts or other, they have incredible guidance systems. Counselors have a guidance system. They meet with a student and say, I want to give you guidance about where you're going. Um, investors have a guidance system. They go to the investment or the business goes to the investment community and says, let me give you some guidance on what this quarter might look like. Uh, the automated car has a guidance system. Ryan, one of our colleagues uh, who's working to really make this real, loves to do drones. By the way, if you look out of your house, there's a drone. Ryan's probably guiding that. Now, I, that was a bad joke on Ryan. Now I've offended <laughs> both Stu and Ryan. But the, the guidance system on the automated vehicle tells you where to go. And so I started thinking in the HR field, here's the presenting pr challenge. We want to build a more competitive organization, 35 to 40 points on that earlier slide, 30 to 40 points. Organization matters. We got a lot of activities, but they're not a guidance system. These 2,700 apps, here's, what, here's, here's a tool. And by the way, I've created some of those. Norm Small and I have an app or two out. I am embarrassed to say it on leadership, sustainability. But there's no guidance system to integrate that. So we wanted to create a guidance system that says there are pathways to competing. What's an integrated way to win in talent, leadership, and organization? Then we said, build the solution based on data. A guidance system doesn't just randomly create data. It's got to have analytics. It's got to have great analytics. And so we began to say, there's a set of theory, research, and practice on guidance. Let me just give an example and you can glance in and I that's why I spent about seven or eight minutes going through talent, leadership, and organization. And I don't want to get in trouble for this and I'd like to not get distracted, but there's a lot of attention in HR around shiny objects. Well, one of the shiny objects right now is employee experience. Great idea. Nobody disagrees with employee experience. But when I start looking at some of the people writing about employee experience, in that talent space, and they don't look at what's been done around employee morale, employee satisfaction, employee commitment, employee engagement, and build on that great literature. They're recreating the wheel. They're doing what I call circles instead of spirals. They're recircling, they're not spiraling. If you're gonna build a guidance system, don't build a guidance system. There's a great company who said, oh, we're trying to discover the secrets of leadership, and we've done our homework of leadership in a team, and secret number one, the leader has to listen to his or her employees. And I scratch my head and I go, we call that participative management. Um, build on that. How do you listen better? How do you help employees undercome their psychological fear? Amy M. Amundsen's great work. How do you help employees build their agenda, not your agenda? Move beyond listening. And a guidance system has got to build on the past. I hope. Carrie, I've given you some ways to think about what a guidance system does. The challenge is to create a competitive organization. Now we believe there's three steps to a guidance system. Let me give you an overview, and then we're going to dive in now and get a little bit geeky uh, before I turn it to Ryan. So I'll go probably 15 more minutes. To build a guidance system, you got to assess where you're going. Oh, I got to make a caveat. My, uh, my PhD, Alan, what did you study for your PhD as you got all the way through that work? What did you study? You told me well, it was uh, mine is uh, work based learning leadership, and it was a multidiscipline from the Wharton School of Business and the Graduate School of Education at Penn. 
super. Mine was numerical taxonomy, which if you have, I give you $20 if you know what it is and 50 if you care. But taxonomy is the <laughs> science. Taxonomy is the science of simplicity. And so I was basically a statistician. I took all those PhD sequences in education, sociology, psychology, and economics, trying to find a way to make the complex simple through taxonomy, that's taxonomy, in a statistical way. What you're going to see is the value of that, I think, in building a guidance system. And it starts with assessment. You can't, and by the way, I say that because you're going to see three things that seem really simple, but they're not easy to do. Marshall Goldsmith's line. How am I doing on talent, leadership, and organization? The second thing is intervention. What could I do better? The father getting the call from the store. So where do I go with this in talent? What could I do to improve to win in the marketplace? Leadership, organization, HR. And then the term that we've been using lately is in this guidance system, how do I do precision navigation? I've got a student, if I'm a guidance counselor, who says, I would like to be uh, a chef. Well, how can I help you in a precise way navigate your career choices to make that happen? Or a guidance system, and Sue used this example that really helped me. Uh, I'm 40 years old, I wanna retire at 60, um, and I wanna retire with 4 million dollars or 4 million euros. Right now I have a million, so I'm 3 million short. By the way, that's a huge number. Um, well, here's the guidance. Here's how much you're gonna have to invest every year and the return you're gonna to have to get to get to the 4 million in 20 years. You've got a navigation system that makes adjustments. We believe those three steps are the steps that are changing. Um, and by the way, let me, uh, I can't remember what I got in here. Uh, on the assessment pathway, uh, let me go back. On the assessment, we think because of technology, we can put that assessment online. A lot of us who've been in the consulting business for years say, let us give you some guidance around your talent systems. And we, we come in, we do a big uh, talent or organization or leadership intervention, we collect data. We believe that in today's world with the digital technology, you can receive that assessment online. Um, and let me give an example. There's some great work by Marty Seligman, uh, who's one of the father of positive psychology. He has 24 character traits you do an online assessment and you find out where you are on those character traits. I've done it, millions of people have done it. We believe that the assessment in each of those pathways can now be done online. We can give you an assessment process who does the rating, either by myself or my team or external content. How do we rate in leadership, talent, organization, and HR? We've created two versions of that assessment. One is what we call level one, that's relatively short talent, we have 18 dimensions of a talent agenda, 79 items at level two, which is more complex. Leadership, I shared with you six phases of leadership or 24 detailed items, four for each phase. Organizational capability, I laid out what some of those are, 12 capabilities or four items for each of the 12, 48. And HR effectiveness, nine dimensions of effective HR I had in the slide, 36 ways to define that. So what have we just said? We believe that in the assessment game, we can go online and do an assessment. And let me go back to what that means. Process, I can do it by myself. That's not very valid, but you can do it. I can do a team assessment online or a 720, which means I get data from customers or investors. I can do level one, which is short, or level two, which is longer. We can give you, and Ryan may be able to demonstrate, or you can join us, an online assessment of where you are on each of these four paths or whichever one you want as your priority to build a better organization. By the way, I get excited about that. It's, it's, I hope we can create a little bit what Marty Seligman's created with the, the positive psychology, the character traits. We'll let you know where you stand, but we're gonna go beyond. That's not yet a guidance system. That's just the data point. Intervention, what could we do to improve? You know your companies are all doing dozens and dozens and hundreds of interventions. And the intervention could be something from individual work that's pretty simple. It could be coaching or reading an article. It could be organizational work, workshops that CorpU does, or consulting. It could be some of the 2,700 apps. We think we have a methodology to assess two things of all the interventions you do to improve on the pathway. 
One is impact, high, medium, or low, and the other is implementability, hard, moderate, or easy. We can now plot the interventions you need to do in order for you to make progress on the pathway to competitive organization. Like Sue's example, I'm, uh, I've got a million dollars in savings at age 40, I wanna have four million. The interventions in the financial world are about risk. How much risk do I wanna take versus performance? We believe we can help you plot a series of interventions. For example, coaching. Impact on the leadership pathway, pretty high. Implementability, relatively easy. That would give you a seven or a nine, eight or a nine. It would be at that top right because that intervention is pretty good. Reading an article to improve my leadership. Impact, to be blunt, relatively low. No offense to those of us who write articles. Implementability, relatively easy. So that may get some points. I may do it. I want to begin to, we want to begin to give you an intervention menu of things you can do that would allow you to make progress on the pathway. And the next step, now that I'm making progress, what could I do to tweak the direction? How do I nudge? That's one of the interesting things. By the way, we're seeing some of this in the individual world of weight loss, where I, uh, <laughs> I could be the eternal before picture, because I'm not very good at this one. But they're now saying in changing behaviors, you set out what you want to do, you've got your interventions, and then we give you precision navigation to monitor improvements that we hope will help you stick. And that's the characteristics of that precision navigation. It's got a direction, what do I want to accomplish in talent, leadership, and organization. It's got real time, there's no lag, there's no delay, it's online, it's successful, it's precise, it gives us nudges, and we monitor it. We believe that we can create a pathway and a guidance system that will now presenting challenge, build the organization that wins along four pathways. That's the solution framework. Assess, intervene, and provide navigation so that a company can move along that direction. This is a moonshot. I am so excited about this moonshot. Because this is what, now uh, let me finish this and then we'll go to questions and uh, maybe do a few questions and then Ryan can take us through. And Alan, I'd love your comments on what I haven't covered well. Uh, this is the first time we've presented this together and we're trying to make it work. But by the way, we've tested this with a couple of companies and we're moving. What does this mean? I'm in HR or I'm a business leader. Very simple. I want to create a more competitive organization. That gets 30 to 40 points. We've got a financial strategic ability, there's four pathways to getting there, talent, leadership, capability, HR. I now through assessment have a baseline, how am I doing? I determine which interventions I can deploy and I can now navigate real time to make precise adjustments that allows me to improve. We believe that if we can create that flow, Carrie, to your question, we have created a guidance system that moves us forward. I think I'm gonna go back to this page, which gives the guidance system and the logic. Alan, I think I'll turn to your comments and then questions for you and or me, and then let Ryan take us through what, what Alan, you think would be the most helpful for the audience. So maybe a few questions and then, your or your comments and then a few questions to you or me, and then the last the last slide, which would be Ryan. Yep, yep, perfect. So we've got the, uh, we've got the guidance system up. Folks, if you have any questions, please uh, fire them away. Uh, a couple have come in, so uh, but but Dave, I think um, I'm kind of anxious to hear maybe get some feedback from our from our audience. Anybody that can uh, even even in the question, just a a comment sound good on track. Anything missing? Um, the thing that I wanted to ask you is, do you do you have any thought on risks? Um, like as people think about doing this, uh, in, in, like what are, what are the risks associated with getting into a guidance system? Are people, you know, potentially worried about anything? Or any? I mean, you've given this more thought than anybody. Do you have any thoughts on on uh, what would make people think um, they wouldn't do this or shouldn't do this, or that, it, that there'd be some risk associated with it? You know, I'm going to go back to this intervention grid. What do we hope the guidance system impact is? <laughs> And again, this is a moonshot and maybe this is a delusional fantasy. I think the impact's pretty high because I think right now in the HR field, we you know close your eyes or take, uh, this is too much of a military metaphor, but take a gun, close your eyes and shoot and hope a bird flew over. Um, 
you know, we got 2,700 apps, well-intended folks, some of them not grounded in customers or an investor, some of them not grounded in history. This guidance system gives me a way to begin to organize and create a taxonomy of all that. So I think the impact is high. Implementability, I'm going to be honest, I think it's probably going to be in the uh, somewhere seven, it's going to be moderately implementable. Uh, I think we're going to learn over time how to make this really easy. Uh, now, what's the risk? Um, the risk is that if you don't continue, that's a great question, Alan. I'll answer and then I'd love to hear your answer. Think of a guidance counselor giving a student guidance. I want to be a chef. The guidance counselor says, great, here's a pathway to help you become a more effective chef. The risk is that the student is not serious about embarking on the pathway. They're just doing a kind of, well, next week I want to be a phlebotomist. Next week I want to be a school teacher. Next week I want to be a doula. Uh, by the way, I've just described one of our children uh, over a month. Those were the four things that our child wanted to be. I better not say who that is. Um, so I think the lack of commitment and seriousness doesn't allow you to create a guidance missile. I mean, you shoot a missile and then you keep tweaking it every which way. But I think that's a risk. I think this impact is high. I think with partnering, we can make it relatively easy to do. And I think it has a potential for a really good outcome. Your your thoughts on that? Yeah, so the, the one that I worry about um, is, is the risk of, and, and this has to go back to like 2,700 new apps that are just in HR. There are that many tech platforms or apps and, and it's the risk of um, another fine program or, or shiny new object or people get started and they don't stick with it. And I think, and I, I only, as I think about it, because I think that's really the challenge for a guidance system is, is, to, is to nudge and to coach and to inspire um, continued forward movement. Exactly what you described um, with the guidance counselor is you've got to get people driving uh, success. And so I, as I think about that, that's a, that's, that's something for us to consider, to think about as you build a system, how do you build a system that, uh, that, that, that does these things. And, and there you go right there. Nudge it. You know, I'm going to, I had a dot on this slide. And when I put this together on, on Monday, I knew there was something missing, Alan, and you just reminded me part of the navigation system along talent leadership organization is, is the cohort you work with. And that was one of the things you taught me at Corp U. You've done a lot of training that doesn't stick. Well, one of the stick abilities of training, and I can't remember exactly what you call it, is getting a cohort of folks who work with each other. And that should be another piece of this navigation. I, I can't remember what you yeah. called that, but it was so critical to the sustainability. Yep. Yeah. Well, no question about it. So we, we obviously believe that guided facilitated cohort based um, learning is the way to go. It creates the best outcomes. It's a sociocultural experience. It's sort of rooted in theory. It, it, it just works. And it's also more generative. Um, this cohort-based learning that, that sociocultural is much more generative. So you can have somebody watch a video or listen to somebody and that becomes very passive and, and um, a, an active learning thing where there's a cohort uh, ties it all together. Okay, so Dave, a question from uh, Michelle. Uh, you, you flashed an assessment model um, and I'm not quite sure what assessment model Michelle's referring to. I'm just wondering if you could put it up or comment on. Um, yep, yeah, might be that, might be that. Um, and she wants, and 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 Michelle, we will be sharing the uh, the the deck, but I want to make sure we get you um, the right thing. So, Dave, you want to talk about the yeah the assessment model? Um, let me go back, Michelle. Great question. Let me go way back here probably too far back. I've gone way too far back. Okay, my job is to figure out how to move the deck. Now I've really screwed up because I've gone way too far back here. But we basically say, if you're going to build a better organization, there's four pathways. That's my spirit of simplicity, why I talked about my PhD. There's a talent pathway, a leadership pathway, a capability pathway, and a human resource department that sustains it. Then what we've said, we've done a ton of work. I mean, show and tell of books. And we've then said, for each of those four pathways, we can do an assessment. So, and, and I guarantee this is not accurate, but I'm willing to be bold enough to say it's a good enough first start. Talent, 
we've identified 18 dimensions of effective talent use of talent Jeez, that slide right there yep yep we've identified 18 dimensions and we can we'll send it to you i mean that we're being pretty transparent about this uh you can look it up it's on one of my linkedin sites each of those eight for example in sourcing talent in in that first bucket of bringing people in uh there's three or four keys of the 18 one is setting the right standards sourcing the right talent both tech, uh, the, what, having uh, uh, different types of talent full-time part-time onboarding there's 18 dimensions and then under those 18 there's 79 specific measures you could do either of those surveys leadership there's six phases of leadership that i had above under each of those six phases there's 24 items so you could do a, a short survey or a long survey to assess where you are on those so and dave um for for michelle we're we're going to point you to a website where you're going to be able to access these and we're going to start to turn on more and more of these features so dave has been um thinking a lot about how to drive a guidance system where the diagnostics and the analytics rather than being chargeable consulting part of what his vision is that we work together that we automate that to deliver more value for more people and and uh, so you're going to get to you're going to be able to access them we're going to we're going to show you that in just one minute dave if i could uh, um we have a we have a um, just a quick question from ismo if i can get you one minute um, to answer um, uh, from ismo great presentation systems evolve yet human behavior is still resistant to change what intervention is really successful in dealing with this issue? Uh, sometimes not very many. Uh, I'm trying to be honest about that. I think we're learning that change is more sustainable when people have information, which we're trying to give, when they have specific actions they can take, and we're trying to give, when they have a community or a cohort that works with them, and we, they see the impact of their change on the outcome they desire. Um, boy, that sounded academic. Uh, that's what we're trying to give people through this guidance system. Some information where they're at, where they want to go, knowing which matters more. And I should say back to the previous Lisa question, we've also got another assessment here. And I'm sorry, this is taking more than a minute, but I'll do it quickly. For example, there's six phases of leadership brand. We also have an outcome measure. Which of these six phases will drive results the most? Because we're not just saying, oh, I set a business case for leadership. I have a model of leadership. Which one of those will have the outcomes that makes the biggest business impact? And so we've got in our work, for example, in HR competencies, I hope some of you have seen, we don't just measure nine domains of competence. We're a relative weighting of the impact of those domains on business outcomes. That's why in our last research, it was Paradox Navigator. It had the most impact on business performance. That's what we're going to be able to give you in each of these areas. But back to your question, we think we can help sustain change more effectively. Is it going to be perfect? No, not at all. Uh, but we think it can help us make progress. Okay, great. Thank you for that question, Ismo. Uh, Dave, because uh, and, and company, we have five minutes. We're going to let's turn it over to uh, our colleague, Ryan. And Ryan, if you could just walk us through. Uh, a brief uh, demo to to give everybody the opportunity to go to rbl.corpu.com and see what this all looks like in in real life. Absolutely, thanks, Alan. Uh, and if, and you may have seen the uh, the uh, URL briefly flashed on the screen there. Um, but we invite you to try out uh, an example, a concept of everything that Dave has just shared uh, this afternoon. And if you want, you can either on your uh, desktop now or even on your mobile device, uh, if you type in rbl.corpu.com, C-O-R-P-U.com, uh, that will, uh, that's a live demo that you can go and experience the very thing that I'm about to demo here. Uh, so if you go to rbl.corpu.com, uh, this is simply a concept where we are introducing some of the concepts that Dave presented. So uh, very quickly, there's probably three to four steps uh, for you to go for. Um, so from the very start, we're simply introducing what we think the guidance system is, and there's a lot of information on the homepage here uh, that explains the four components across leadership and talent, HR, and organization capability. Um, but there's a simple, uh, a call to action button here to uh, get started with this. And so 
uh, if you click the, the Get Started button, uh, the next screen that you will see here is the opportunity for you to pick a path. And, and maybe this is a path and, and one that you want to get better at within the organization or to improve within the organization. And so here you see the same path that they presented across leadership, capability, talent, and HR effectiveness. And so if you select any one of these paths, and again, you can do this multiple times. This is simply a demo site just to share some of these concepts. So feel free to do one many times or do many of them many times. Uh, but here, I'm just going to select the leadership brand pathway here. And then the next screen, you're going to see what you get out of this assessment. So you see uh, the value prop by doing this uh, doing this assessment alone and taking the uh, self-assessment. You also see just a little teaser here as far as what's coming in the uh, coming months with the multi-rater piece that was mentioned in the presentation, being able to share this assessment out with your colleagues or even with um, investors and so on. Uh, but that, that is not finished yet. But at least in this demo environment, it's a way for you just to see the process, the workflow, and some of the, the ideas that we are presenting here. So if you uh, select the option to get started with self, that will then present one of the four assessments uh, to you. So in this example here, I'm doing the leadership brand assessment, just a few quick questions that you can quickly do. And then lastly, you will land on a, a result page where you can see what your score is based on the assessment that you just completed. Um, and then we just have a lot of concepts that we're playing around with and we would love your feedback um, and we'll glean insights from all of you that complete this. Maybe you know, we can share that back at, uh, you know, uh, with you at a later time. Uh, but you can see if your score is good or bad um, and what investing a little bit more time or including a little bit more people in your plan, what that can do to uh, increase your score. And then down below, you'll see the recommended interventions. And again, this is just a concept where we can create the roadmap or the path forward for you to have very clear and simple steps for you to do next in order to improve your leadership capability in this example. Or maybe there's courses, maybe there's things where you need to get a group of people together and go on a journey uh, to improve certain capabilities. Or maybe there's even tools and templates that this, this type of system can serve up to you that you can easily download and use and implement within the organization. And then if this is obviously interesting, you can download and share these results uh, with uh, yourself as well as uh, with your colleagues. So just a right. few simple and easy steps here. So uh, look forward to you uh, trying it out. Uh, back to you, Alan. Thank you. Yep, thank you for the demo, Ryan. So go to rbl.corpu.com. We'd love to uh, get some feedback, take any of these assessments, try them out, send them to your friends, colleagues, uh, any feedback at all, we'd love to hear it. I just want to say on behalf of of our uh, CorpU audience and friends of CorpU, we are so thrilled uh, and grateful, Dave, that you're with us today. Um, as I said before, I can't think of anybody who's given more thought to developing uh, an enriched point of view on on the future of organizations, the future of learning, the future of HR, future of work. Um, and I think um, it's just been great to have you with us and uh, we really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for their time, but thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. We hope you'll uh, guide us in creating our guidance system. Fantastic. Thanks all.